Wiki Speed Shop, Linwood, Washington. Uh, beautiful April day. Rob just opened up Bay One. That's Rob Beresford out here's our work table. We're pruning some uh, some of the trees back here right now. And then Bay Two, Three, and Four. So here's the person door for Wiki Speed with an electronic lock. So anyone who signed the team member form has 24 hour access. On the left we have our safety shelf, all uh, spill cleanup equipment. Um, Gloves, hearing protection, eye protection, face shields uh, required for uh, working in the Wikispeed shop. Next to it is the snack shelf, and this is all donations. So we have cliff bars, and uh, people bring chips, and we've got a bunch of water, and a bunch of beer and wine and sodas. We're, we're really lucky, and that's all donated. There's the stairs to the upstairs where uh, Kuhn will be staying with us for, I think, about 30 days. There's Kuhn here in Bay 1. Here, this white shelf is all the uh, hand tools and the hand tools are in white bins uh, bins with white stripes and they go on the shelf with the uh, white header here is the uh, yellow shelf which has all of our uh, hand tools so white is power tools so there's the drill bin and then below it the drill bits so people just take the drill bin to where they're going take out the drill they need use it put it back in the bin and put it anywhere back on this white shelf same here with the yellow shelf which is uh, hand tools Blue shelf is fasteners. It says fasteners and binders at the top. So we have structural adhesives, uh, zip ties for wiring, Velcro for wiring, um, aluminum adhesives, etc. On the left, right here in Bay 1, is our Kanban board, our sprint planning board. It has the backlog, doing, pending review, and done columns. People come in, they take the item closest to the top left that either they're excited about or they want to learn about and they put it in doing and write their name next to it and then they shout out who would like to do this with me and they find a pair and then when they think they're done they put it in pending review and they shout out who here knows the most about this and then someone will say oh, that might be me that's here tonight and they'll check to see if it's done if it's not done they'll write a new task put it in the backlog column and if it is done they'll move the task to pending review uh, move it from pending review to done and, and that's the uh, built-in workflow Here's some graphics that Gainlight Studio made for us, our milestones, information on our, our efficiency and speed and our safety and our modularity, showing the car split apart into multiple pieces with it via its modules. And then here in Bay 1 right now, we have our first car. This is the car we competed with in the XPRIZE. Uh, it had a four-seat interior in it at that time for the mainstream class. The interior is a module. We swap it with different ones. Right now, there's a two-seat interior in it. The engine we used in the XPRIZE is here. Although the suspension has evolved 27 times since the XPRIZE, uh, different module upgrades. Uh, and the body's off right now because it's in Bay 2. So here in Bay 1 is where we do general assembly, disassembly, cleaning, and general maintenance. Like this is where we'll change our oil. So you'll see uh, oil changing equipment, cleaning equipment, scales, digital scales to weigh the car across four axes. Bay 2 is interior work and electronics work. So the green shelf is the electronic shelf. Here's where we keep oscillosco oscilloscopes, wiring, Arduinos, Netduinos, uh, uh, benchtop power supplies, um, uh, electronics rapid prototyping stuff, and also interior. So here's Car Body 2 up on its side. It's all carbon fiber with our manufacturer's license plate. And we've just upgraded from halogen lights to uh, LEDs. And so it's here in Bay 2 because it's interior and electronics work being done to it. So this is also where we'll cut carpet and polycarbonate. Bay 3 starts with our CAD station with these two monitors and that little Dell computer there. And we'll download CAD from anywhere in the world, spin it around in 3D, check if it's the shape we want, if it uh, passes fitment. And we'll put it on this little computer to use a CAM program to generate G-code. The G-code then uses this CNC router. It's like a printer or a plotter except as a milling bit on the end instead of spraying out ink and right now it's cut, set for uh, cutting some aluminum and uh, we'll cut foam we'll put four foot wide by eight foot long foam slabs on there and hit print and machine out the shapes that we received in CAD so almost anything that can be drawn we can cut here we'll flip over the boards to cut undercuts on the reverse side if we need to and then we stack them up here at the head of bay three and uh, like a um, uh, like a, um, a, a a map showing height, the name of which temporarily escapes me. Um, what is that called? Like a map showing height. 
we stack them up and make a car. And then under the router, we have all of our carbon fiber and our epoxy. And we put the carbon fiber on top, mix up epoxy, set it on. And then here in bay three, we then lay up the, uh, lay up the carbon. Here's also a, a lathe and then this, this insulated box keeps the resin warm because it mixes well and then runs down and penetrates well when it's about 70 degrees. It's maybe 55 degrees in the shop right now. Also in Bay 3 we do engine work. So there's a prototype of engine module V4 and another uh, engine module. And then the tools, tools to work on engines are here in Bay 3 as well along with the tools to work on composites. So that's Bay 3. Then we have Bay 4 which is where we do metal work. So we use this red bandsaw that we got from Harbor Freight for 89 bucks with a coupon to cut aluminum extrusions. And then we use this gray milling machine that we got on Craigslist for 400 bucks. And with those two pieces of machinery, we're able to make every part of the car we use. Now, other tools like this sheet metal bending brake and like the CNC router help us work with aluminum even more quickly. But all we need is the milling machine and the bandsaw. And then we have this Everlast TIG welding machine, which is phenomenal. It, uh, <laughs> it can weld all day and then some. It's, it's a wonderful piece of uh, equipment. And there's the argon tank for it. Um, and then here's the grinding station for sharpening the uh, welding bits. Here's our sheet metal stock. It goes from thinner to thick, organized, and then at the end is polycarbonate. Uh, which we use for prototyping our side windows, rear windows, and we even prototyped our windshield with it to, to begin with. And then up above our head, hanging, is enough aluminum to make two more cars. Down below in front of me is one of our chassis. This is chassis number five, and it has an interior module sitting on top of it. So we frame in seats, seat belts, safety anchors into that interior module, and it nests down inside, two or four seats. Our engine modules nest in the back where that pallet jack is, and this simple part, uh, the simple frame, is the lightest, strongest thing in the world we know about, that when it has its crust structures attached, achieves a five-star crash rating equivalency. Here we are cutting another one. You see the four 10-foot long verticals, the six 12-inch tall horizontals, so those are complete sides. All that are remaining here are four 40-inch cross members, and we have an SGT-01 chassis, Super Grand Touring 01. Grand Touring typically means long-distance racing, and we thought, well, if you're doing that at over 100 miles per gallon, maybe that's super grand touring. And then zero one because it's our first one. So that's bay one, two, three, and four here in the Wikispeed shop, the Linwood, Washington Wikispeed shop.